the voice of Sherry. Hi, good morning, namaste to everyone. Welcome to Body Mind, the first and only radio show in Malaysia specially designed to talk about various issues and topics in modern Buddhism as well as contemporary Dharma. Today we are very honored to have our guest, Kempola, here. And uh, before we begin, let me give a little bit introduction about uh, Kempola. So, Kempo, uh, Kempo Jordan uh, was born in Tibet in 1958 and became a monk when he was 10 years old. Later, he became a teacher at the Sakya College and he continued his education at Harvard University, earning a PhD. And then he then taught Tibetan Buddhism in various universities uh, in 2009. And uh, at that year also, he was appointed the director of IBA Nepal by His Holiness the Sakya Trizind. Uh, he continues to be a prolific lecturer and writer in Buddhist education. So we are very honored and happy to have you here, Kempola. Welcome to Malaysia. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, how's your um, perception about Malaysia? It's very hot, I know, these few days. <laughs> <laughs> Just coming from Nepal, um, okay. you know, but uh, the cold weather we had, yeah. yeah, compared to that, it's a little bit shocking. Okay. However, uh, knowing about uh, Malaysia, um, its weather, and also its neighbor to Singapore, mm. I'm not that shocked. Uh-huh. I'm I'm quite uh, okay with this kind of mm. weather. It's, it's expected. A, is it your first time to Malaysia, Kimba? Uh Kuala Lumpur, yes, first time. I've been to Kuching uh, one time, a uh, long time ago. Uh-huh. Uh, for a few days, um, I part- participated there for a uh, international conference on mm. Buddhism. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. Have you tried durian, Kembola? <laughs> yes, I <Because> did. <laughs> durian, um, I, I think it was also a long, long time ago. Oh, okay. I tried it in Singapore. Singapore. Huh? Um, so, you know, I actually, the taste of it, uh, I liked it. Okay. Of course, the, the smell. Uh-huh. But in, if you have the ability to block not spelling it, but tasting it, <laughs> then that would be fine. Yeah. <laughs> We're asking this question because our, our radio show is Durian FM. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So no worry, we'll bring you to more durians. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, yeah. sooner or later in this day. So, Kempala, what is your uh, perception about Malaysia this time? Uh, Malaysia, um, yeah, one thing is uh, it's uh, clean mm-hmm. and it's uh, spacious and also... Wherever you go, the roads are really, um, you know, wonderful, mm. uh, smooth, and uh, wide. Um, again, uh, I'm speaking um, on what do you call the comparative to uh, what we have in Nepal. Uh, mm. Roads are smaller and also not very nicely done. Mm-hmm. So that's why I'm coming here. All of a sudden, the you know, uh, driving on this kind of road is really wonderful. Mm. Uh, and then you look around, mm. everywhere is green. So mm. this is something um, I really, really love it. Oh. Thank you for saying that. Uh-huh. <laughs> and here, uh, this time you are come here, uh, you come to Malaysia to teach about mind training, right? Yes. So can Kempola please explain about what is mind training in Buddhism? Yeah, I came here this time um, just uh, as an introduction myself, you know, to uh, this uh, new place. Mm. And also, uh, you know, to do that, I have to, of course... Uh, present something um, and uh, the I like this uh, even though there are so many teachings that you can give mm. but the mind training is something everybody can do uh, at the same time also for me uh, I have a very uh, easy kind of feeling to uh, embark on this teaching it's mm. something that I like something yes. that I feel that uh, it can benefit lots and lots of people. Mm. Um, you know, it, it doesn't require you know, this and that kind of rituals or uh, different kinds of requirements. It doesn't have it. So yeah. only um, when you, you have a mind mm-hmm. and you can work with it. Yes. So this gives you some technique how to work with your mind. Yeah. So that is why um, this teaching, you know, I really like to uh, give everywhere I go, uh, mm. no matter how big uh, or how many days mm-hmm. but as long as I can really like uh, touch on this uh, subject mm-hmm. matter and uh, um, introduce, introduce this to uh, people that who do not have a, that uh, much of uh, Buddhist studies yeah. and you know they can still 
do uh, the practice oh, yeah. of transforming your mind. Yeah. Is this mind training same or equalized as meditation, or they are different? Kevala. Um. No, actually, it's the same. It's the same. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, we use English word meditation. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So meditation is what I mean. Uh, not only we use English word, but yeah. this this word comes from Judeo-Christian background. Yes. Yeah, so what does it involve? You know. Uh -huh. So sometimes I wonder whether when we use the meditation, the word meditation in English, mm. whether we are really conveying what we do as a Buddhist or Hindu, this uh, you know word coming from there. For that is the bhavana. Bhavana. A oh. Sanskrit word Sanskrit. bhavana. Yeah. And uh, when this bhavana is translated into Tibetan words, it's gom. Mm -hmm. So gom basically meaning, uh, you know, uh, familiarizing yourself into something mm. or getting accustomed to a new idea or whatever new lifestyle that. Yeah, so you just repeat it. Yes. So that is uh, what is bhavana mean. Yeah. Uh, for example, our mind, you know, uh, whatever the the state of mind that you have at the moment, mm -hmm. when you have this uh, mind training instruction, then you can change your state of mind into something positive, mm -hmm. and try to keep that, try to maintain that positivity of your uh, state of mind is called. Bhavana, or it's called actualizing, or maybe familiarizing yourself. Mm. In Tibetan, it's gom. Gom mm. meaning to you repeat it. You have to get used to it. You have mm. to get used to the state of mind, and then if you are able to maintain that state of mind, not you know going or falling back to uh, some kind of negative state of mind or mm. something like that, that's called I think also the meditation or the bhavana. Okay. Yeah. So, um, does it have any <coughs> link or connection with the uh, so-called in the Western world? They are popular. They talk about positive thinking. Mm -hmm. So, this kind, this time meditation does it involve thinking or not thinking? Yes. When we talk about meditation, people think that you are not thinking, you are not doing anything. Right. Does it involve any thinking at all? Right. No thoughts. Yeah. Uh, there are many different kinds of meditations. Mm -hmm. For that, you know, mm -hmm. uh, there are uh, meditations that are um, very much thinking. Mm. But then some of the meditations are not thinking at all. Mm. Uh, but the mind training involves everything. Okay. Uh, so we have to really like a, uh, start from thinking, mm. and then the goal has to be uh, reach to the non-thinking state of mind. Mm -hmm. uh, so the uh, conceptual thinking, right? So thinking means we have kind of conceptualizing a lot of things, mm -hmm. and so for that. Uh, for example, the thinking of negativity, negativity, uh, negative thought is mm. also conceptualization, and it's a thinking. Yep. But that uh, has to transform into positive thinking, even mm. though it's still a thinking, but it's a positive. So that means you are transforming from negative to positive. Yeah. And then at the end, uh, you know, through this kind of mind training. Uh, not only you have to get rid of uh, the uh, negative thinking, but also thinking itself has to be stopped. Mm. That's our final goal, because that is also uh, none other than um, what is very popularly known as the realization of the emptiness or the selflessness. Mm -hmm. So when there's no self, there's no nothing, it, everything's empty, then of course thought itself is... Mm. Uh, also not acceptable, right? So mm -hmm. thoughtless or non-conceptual. 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 But even when we are talking about it, mm -hmm. uh, non-conceptual is still a thought, yeah. right? <laughs> but however, you, you get the idea from there. Mm -hmm. uh, talking about conceptual, non-conceptual, mm -hmm. we have to get to the state of non-conceptual. Mm -hmm. And the real non-conceptual state of the mind is the uh, mind of the Buddha, mm -hmm. or not mind of a Bodhisattva who is in meditative equipoise. Mm -hmm. So there, you don't have any thoughts. But what it is is the then unthinkable, that the inexpressible, that kind of inconceivable, state of, kind inconceivable. Of, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. that is the goal of mind training. Mm. Can well, we ever ch achieve to such kind of noble and sublime state of inconceivability? You think that we, is as uh, modern day people, can we do really achieve that state of non-thoughts? Yeah, I have no doubt. Yes, yeah. you can. Mm -hmm. You can because the teachings are available, methods are available, and also teachers are available. Yeah. 
So uh, that's why I'm here to say, uh, what is stopping you? Mm. Go ahead and get it done. Okay. So you can do it. Mm. Uh, you know. So yeah. just just do it. <laughs> yeah. There's there's a guarantee for it. Okay. Let's just do it. Okay. Yeah. The lineage is there. The teaching. Yes. Is there. Teachings yeah. there. And then now I I just read a book called um, by um, this uh, Sam Harris. It's called Waking Up, and he's a neuroscientist. He talk about um, the relationship between mindfulness, meditation, and uh, neuroscience. So in Campbell's opinion. Um, does meditation can really make us our brain wave um, more e- more stable and uh, bring us the benefits such as healthy body, healthy mind, etc. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah I, I do believe that mm-hmm. because even though I'm not a scientist, I'm not a physician, you know, I'm not a biologist. Mm. Uh, I don't know much about the the workings of our physical body and mm-hmm. how the neuro works. Yeah. However, that for sure that there is the connection. Mm-hmm. between our mind and our uh, physical body. Mm-hmm. So therefore, I think uh, the power of the mind cannot be uh, uh, underestimated, you know, most of the time. Yeah. So even though somebody, for example, a very uh, sick person, mm-hmm. if he or she has the mind to live, mm-hmm. mind to fight with whatever disease that that person is going through, mm-hmm. uh, that power of that mind, you know, can really... Uh, I don't know, uh, kind of uh, amazes you. Uh, mm-hmm. Even there are a lot of stories like that. Mm-hmm. You know, some doctors, for example, some great lamas, great lamas who have uh, uh, a lot of uh, practice, uh, meditation. Um, then sometimes, you know, of course, when these lamas who are also going through some uh, diseases and mm-hmm. things like that, they, it, it really surprised many doctors because mm-hmm. they have no idea what is going on. Yeah. From their point of view, the clinically, you know, it's gone, it's finished, whatever. But then reality is uh, something very amazing thing happening yeah. with them. Yeah. So this is, is uh, I see it, mm. the power of the mind, mm. and then the connection between mind and body is uh, very, very close. Mm-hmm. So we can, like, like the Zen people say, the mind itself is Buddha. Yes, can we say that? Yeah. that's right. That's yeah. anyway. Yeah. So I think with that, I think there's something in it. That's the reason. I think mainly behind His Holiness Dalai Lama, who mm. is so much interested in yes. dialoguing with the scientists, yes, even yes. though it's very difficult to bring in these very, very I don't know, famous scientists, you know. Mm-hmm. But he really tried his best so yes, far. Yes, it's yes. been going on yes. because he sees something there. Even though the mind training, the Buddhist uh, practice is all very much focused on uh, the future life and maybe eventually achieving achieving Buddhahood, mm-hmm. but Dalai Lama's um, idea is uh, you know not only that, mm-hmm. but also for the time being, temporarily, mm-hmm. how much uh, the the science can benefit for. For example, uh, advancing in the medical treatment, uh, mm-hmm. medical uh, cure, and so he thinks that the that part is the relative truth, mm. according to Buddhism. Yeah. The relative truth is a little bit kind of uh, uh, not developed mm. very much in Buddhism. Yeah. So therefore, he is hoping that there is that uh, part. Uh, we can uh, supplement from science point of view to the Buddhism, and then Buddhism can also contribute to the scientists or the science. Mm. And when we combine it together, but then temporarily also we can do better mm. in uh, elevating suffering, in not only achieving Buddhahood and Nirvana, but mm-hmm. that is in the future, you know. Yes, from, yes, yes. But for now, yeah. Uh, those who are not believing in like uh, nirvana and buddhahood and 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 the bodhisattva hood mm. but they also have to go through this kind of suffering yes. if we can help them elevating some of the suffering uh, from these mm. kind of a uh, combination of studies then i think that's worthwhile doing so, it so in other words we must have a healthy body healthy mind that's right before we can achieve perfect life that's right yeah? this that's is right. a gradual Absolutely. path yeah. of a spiritual practice right mm-hmm. and then Kimbala, there's um this in the west also since um, uh, buddhist meditation is very much connected to our body mind um health and then such thing and then they, they, they have a term called um, spiritual but not religious. Mm-hmm. They take Buddhism as uh, not a religion but the art of living. And they meditate just to have a bo- healthy body and mind. 
Yeah. Yeah. So what do you think about this this kind of view? I think this is this is also okay. This is yes. also you know, mm. um, this is what I just mentioned. Like uh, they are not concerned about. Uh, uh, achieving nirvana yes. or achieving Buddhahood, yeah. they wanted to have a good life. Yeah. You know, yeah. living in samsara from the Buddhist point of view, living in the world, but mm. still want to live uh, happily and maybe uh, less, you know, suffering. Yes. Uh, so that's fine. Mm -hmm. However, mm, you know, the main purpose of the Buddhism, mm -hmm. when Buddha Shakyamuni gave all these teachings of uh, eighty-four thousand heaps of teachings, so-called. Yeah. Yeah. It's not meant for uh, these kinds of things. Yeah. It's meant for, as I said, um, really not just uh, even elevating, but it's actually uprooting. Uprooting. Uprooting the suffering. Uprooting the you know suffering of the birth, age, and um, aging, and all of those things, so mm -hmm. that um, one you know, do not have to come back to this uh, samsara, mm. uh, and then it's free from all this suffering forever. Uh, so, but, but you know, those who have chosen the another path, which is uh, samsara, is nothing wrong with it. Yeah. I want to live in samsara still, uh -huh. but yeah. I can make it better. Yeah. For that reason, I went to use Buddhism yeah. to have a you know healthy uh, body, healthy mind, so forth. I think it's okay, mm -hmm. uh, but I think in a way, um, from a very logical uh, reasoning point of view, I would say that that mm, the the uh, Buddhism is used for some lesser, uh, what do you call, lesser purpose, maybe. Lesser purpose, uh, yeah. You know, I even though it meant for big purpose, uh -huh. but it's used for a small purpose. It, it doesn't serve the ultimate aim That's of right. uh, Buddha Dharma, right? Yeah. Uh, and then, Kimberly, there's also in the West, there's, there's a school of thoughts that um, proclaim a movement called Buddhism without belief, uh, like a certain uh, like Stephen Batchelor, uh, mm -hmm. Professor Stephen Batchelor, he said that in, in if you really want to practice Dharma, you don't have to believe in uh, samsara. You don't have to believe that it's a cyclic existence. You don't have to believe there's a karma. Mm -hmm. You don't have to believe there's a Buddhahood. Yeah. So what do you think about this kind of um, thoughts? Yeah, especially just these kinds of words coming from St Stephen Batchelor. Yeah. I I have. Mm, yeah, um, I, w I wouldn't say, I, w I would not like to say that mm. you know, he doesn't know Buddhism at all. Mm -hmm. You know, he knows, I, yeah, he I know. know for sure. Yeah. But I think it's a little bit premature that he was speaking out this kind of thing. Mm. There is a room for it. Mm. But all people, those people who are, uh, you know, uh, practicing such a thing is not really on that level of uh, uh, the attainment. Uh -huh. What I meant by that is the when you go through the practice, you will reach to a certain point where you have a realization of emptiness yes, yes. and selflessness. Yeah. And that's where and then you can say that you are beyond, you are out of, free of uh, belief. Mm. Uh, believing means conceptual thinking, you know, as yeah. I have concept. Yes. So uh, when you reach to the non-conceptual state, then there is no really believing in samsara or believing in samsara being something bad, some, mm. you know, mm. nirvana being something good. No, mm. then you are beyond that. Mm. Uh, but, you know, um, how can you say that is the one, uh, I don't know what to call, uh, tradition? Yes, uh, yes. There's no such thing. I mean, no such thing. People can reach that point yes. uh, if you are, uh, you know, kind of a preserving, uh, a very, uh, yeah, good practitioner. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. So this is different from secular ethics, right? Like what he's on Dalai Lama always. Yes, I, I'm sure. That's yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm, okay. And Kepler, now we know that um, Tibetan Buddhism. You are the teacher of Tibetan Buddhism, and Tibetan Buddhism has so many schools. Yes. And uh, uh, what is so special about your school, which is a Sakya tradition? Can you mm -hmm. tell us about more about the Sakya tradition? Uh, Sakya school, of course. Um, maybe if you ask uh, anybody in in Tibetan Buddhist. Uh, uh, high lamas and also scholars, um, they will all, for me, I'm sure that they will say that they're basically they're all same. Mm -hmm. However, the different names because of uh, who uh, started it, who established this particular tradition. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's where you have different names. Uh, and because of that different names, what you find within them is the, the differences are in terms of rituals mm -hmm. and, and maybe also uh, differences of uh, importance of certain, uh, you know, practices. For example, the Sakya school, uh, 
the Sankhya school's main uh, practice or the uh, well-known practice is uh, called Lamde. Lamde practice. Um, now we are talking about Bajariya, mm. uh, When it comes to that, and then you can see the difference between the uh, different schools uh, mm. in terms of uh, tradition and what particular practices. So that's why Sakya Pa's uh, main practice is Lamde. The Lamde uh, practice is uh, uh, its main deity, you can say, is the Hebajara. Mm. Hebajara deity. And then uh, in connection to the Hebajara deity, there are so many teachings about this Lamde uh, coming from, you know, all the lineage gurus, starting from the Indian guru, uh, Virupa. Mm. And of course, Virupa, then you can trace back to the Bajardara Buddha. Mm -hmm. So coming from there until today is an unbroken kind of uh, uh, tradition, uh, uh, lineage is kept in this uh, school. Mm. Uh, so this is the Sakya school's uh, uh, important kind of, uh, what do you call, the unique you can say a unique practice uh, that the others do not particularly follow. Mm -hmm. Then if you talk about other schools, they have their also unique practices, mm -hmm. similar to uh, in the Sakya, that they have different deity, and, and in connection to that, that deity, that you have teachings about it. About it. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the uh, sutra practice, uh, or sutra teaching of uh, what we study, uh, I think very much the same with all schools. We follow uh, Indian uh, scriptures. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, all these scriptures are basically the commentaries to the Buddha's Sutra. Mm -hmm. And then Indian great masters like Nagarjuna and Shantideva and so forth and so on, they have uh, written down commentaries to all of it. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we study them. Uh, of course, these uh, commentaries were translated into Tibetan. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then we study them, and, and everywhere, all the different Buddhist, uh, Tibetan Buddhist schools, we uh, study the same text, but then when it comes to the, the, our own Tibetan commentaries, then you have, you know, Nyingma Pals will uh, emphasize, uh, what do you call them, uh, yeah, more kind of a focus on their commentarial traditions, mm -hmm. Of course, based on the Indian tradition, mm -hmm. but then when it comes to the Tibetan, they have their own commentaries yeah. they follow. Yeah. And Sakya was too like that. Mm -hmm. So, but then when it comes to the Vajrayana, that's mm -hmm. where you have some differences. Mm -hmm. And Kemal, you mentioned about the word deity. Huh? Uh, how does it differ from uh, gods in other religions? Mm -hmm. And uh, some, uh, another question is that uh, people in the, in the, in the, in the Vajrayana cycle always think that uh, Vajrayana deity is almost similar like Hindu ones, you know. So how do we make a difference on that? Yeah, uh, yeah, it's different because uh, mm, the word uh, God is used uh, everywhere, right? The deities are gods and also there are so many different gods. Mm. However, the uh, Hindus and also shared by other, of course, the Judeo-Christian in their sense of God, is there's only one God, right? And that is the Creator. Okay. Uh, so even though we share the same word God with the deities and other, and even there's mundane deities or mundane gods, and, but uh, uh, none of these are considered Creator of something, mm -hmm. Creator of the world. Mm -hmm. So that's why, from that perspective, uh, it's not Hindu. Mm -hmm. The Hindus do have the, the you know, God who creates everything, mm. God who destroys everything, mm. and God who sustains. Yeah. We don't have that. Mm. So who is destroying, who is uh, creating, is our own karma, mm -hmm. uh, together with our mental afflictions, yes, right? Yes, yes. Uh, but God doesn't do anything. Mm -hmm. uh, but these deities, you have a physical deities, mm. uh, we call God or whatever, um, as I mentioned, you the, just a moment ago, a Hevajara in Sakya, yeah. and then there is the Kala Chakra, and, and it's a universal for every school, mm -hmm. and maybe then Guya Samaja, and so forth and so on. Yeah. All of these are God or the deity, right? But they are, uh, none of these are the creator mm -hmm. uh, for anything like that. Mm -hmm. But then also, when you go deeper into the, uh, the uh, practice and the teachings of these uh, Vajrayana, uh, deity related teachings, then there is the physical uh, deity that you can invoke mm. from their pure land. Mm -hmm. But there is the 
inner uh, deity of Hefaza, that's you, yourself. Mm -hmm. You are the purified uh, aspect or the state of the mind. Mm -hmm. When you realize that, then you cannot see deity out there. Deity is yourself. Mm -hmm. That is why your body is also a a mandala of uh, such and such deities. Okay. And how about some uh, tantric deities that is quite similar to Hindu, like uh, Kurukule and Tara and Mahakala, all these things? They share the similar name and features and as well as some right. aspect of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, honestly speaking, the very nitty gritty kind of uh, uh, clarification of all of these are a little bit confusing. Mm -hmm. uh, for myself too, I are still really... Uh, don't have very clear picture of it, mm. but uh, the explanation that I have heard and maybe it's given in the text is that the Hindu deities or these Kurukuli and all of those uh, came before, mm. and they are instead of helping uh, sentient beings, they are actually harming sentient beings. Oh. Okay, for for these deities, the people make uh, sacrificial offerings, you know, people kill animals, animals and maybe sacrifice. even in ancient times the human beings are killed and sacrificed. Yes, yes. So for th in order to uh, remedy these, mm. then some uh, great bodhisattvas and buddhas um, manifested themselves into a similar form of deity, Kurguli. Mm. Actually, it's the it's the antidote for for, for the uh, harming Kurukuli. Yeah, yeah. So that's why you can always see side by side. There's Hindu uh, Mahadeva, this and that, yes, yes. and then there is the Buddhist deity mm. uh, who is actually stepping S on that Mahadeva. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the representation of how uh, these evil ones are subdued mm. by uh, the positive or the uh, the the you know opposite of yes. the evil. Yes, yes. And talking about um, coexistence between Hinduism and Buddhism, Kempel, I know you just uh, came back from the West, yeah. and you studied in Harvard and earned a PhD. Then you came back to Nepal, and yes. Nepal is a way where, where all the religion flourish. Yes, very well that's right. Coexist together. Mm -hmm. So from the West back to the East in Nepal, Kempel, can you explain to us what? Well, how do you feel? Now I feel that mm. the East has uh, so much to offer. Mm. Uh, before I uh, took a pause, um, many people do, uh, mm. including myself, I realized that we are taking everything for granted. Mm. In our homeland. Yeah. yeah. Mm. For example, you know, uh, when I went to the uh, West to study, uh, I went there uh, with the set of mind uh, saying to myself, you know, yeah. that I want to go there to gain something, gain some knowledge. Yeah. And I don't want to lose what I had before. I don't want to uh, give it up and mm. maybe then replace it by Western, you know, thoughts. Yes. I, from the beginning, I just uh, made myself this promise to myself. Okay. So that is why going there, then I realized how much we have. Mm. And I appreciate it more. Mm. I really was proud of myself being uh, born in the East mm. and also having the opportunity to... Um, grew up in this kind of society and mm. then met with these great teachers and mm. also having this opportunity to study uh, Buddha Dharma, Buddhist philosophy for so long. Mm -hmm. And so then I thought, okay, uh, in, if I'm able, um, by means of my own other languages, you know, mm -hmm. then I have something to offer. I, can, I have something to share with the people that is really, uh, you know, something very, very positive that they, they don't have. Mm -hmm. So that's I, what I felt. So now, uh, going back to the uh, <clears throat> East again, you know, mm. yeah, that was my actual original idea. Mm -hmm. mm, I, as I said before, mm -hmm. I went to uh, West to gain something. Yes. And after, you know, finishing my studies there, uh, I didn't go there to achieve Buddhahood. <laughs> right? Then I thought to myself, um, I will never achieve Buddhahood there. <laughs> I may not achieve Buddhahood even in the, in the East. Uh. But now, uh, what is the point for me to be here? Uh, yeah. For what reason, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, even if you want to become very, very famous professor or things like that, mm. you have to 
play with so much politics yeah, I know. in even in the universities in you know, office politics and yes uh, politics mm. and then the um, education wise um, no matter how long you can spend mm. there's no limit to it always there's something to gain right yes, yes. but then I thought okay I have um, promised to my teacher before mm. that I'm mm, you know uh, studying here, and after f finish my study, I will come back. I will go back and serve my I am society, my my uh, community. Yes. So now this is time, particularly when Kenshin Appearance which asked me to come back. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. I thought I may not have much to offer, yeah. but at least if I say yes to what my teacher asked me to, mm. then I will be happy uh, yeah. the rest of my life because yeah. I have not decline my teacher's request mm -hmm. because my teacher is everything for me mm. uh, what I'm at that time what I'm today even now mm. is all you know um, I owe it everything to my teacher mm. so that is why I'm very happy that when I said I, I will come back mm -hmm. because uh, I you know made my teacher you know, at that point a little bit happy yeah. you know so that makes me happy. Mm. And then after that, you know, two years, he passed away. Mm. And when he passed away, just before passing away, he said, now I have no particular concern for IBA. Mm. This is all I can go happily. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing that mm. I feel really like, a, mm. uh, yeah, something that I did well. Mm. So you're fulfilling your goals, yes, wishes. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And then, uh, while you're in the West and you come back now, you come back to the East. So some say that uh, Eastern value and uh, the Western value has clash. It's quite different. And then we know that there's, um, for example, there's Me Too movement in the West. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now and then also, particularly in the West also, we see some uh, scandals in the yes. Buddhist teachers. And they also claim this is because of Me Too movement. Mm -hmm. And some teachers I heard, they say that this... This this movement has gone too far, mm -hmm. and he's against our Buddhist culture. Yeah. So there's two kinds of view here. So how do you reconcile these two, Kempala? Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, Me Too movement uh, yeah. came out, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but but in generally speaking, uh, the women and and the children uh, are needed to be protected. Yeah. you know, uh, in society, yes. we know, we all know. No matter where, whether you are in east or west or where, you know these two kinds of uh, human beings are always uh, uh, harmed. You yeah. know, is uh, the victims. Of yeah, the victims. For that reason, um, they need protection yes. from from every uh, living beings. You know, uh, no matter what. Uh, but then now this Me Too movement. Mm, I don't know, maybe this is started by somebody with a genuine uh, motivation. Mm -hmm. It's always the case, even something that's wonderful, that is established by you know, good motivation, but it's always, uh, it gets kind of, uh, uh, you know, misused, okay. right? Mm. So I'm afraid that that may be happening uh, in mm. some ways right now. Uh, but uh, generally speaking, no matter what, where, wherever you are, uh, whether you are in Catholic uh, you know, society or Buddhist society, mm. uh, somebody who's doing wrong thing is wrong. Yes. No matter what, no matter right? What. There's no justification whatsoever. No who, right? right? Mm -hmm. Particularly people who really use dharma or something like that just for fulfillment of you, their own selfish desire. I think. Those needs to be punished. Yeah. I think there's no excuse, uh, there's no room for excuse at all. Okay. And uh, so, however, uh, one thing is these kinds of things are always coming from West. Then it, it bothers me a little bit because the mm -hmm. Western people, mm -hmm. uh, compared to uh, many of the uh, Eastern people, mm. they are more advanced in education. Mm. Uh, they're supposed to know better than many of the, you know, Eastern people. Mm. So, um, then now with the Me Too movement, so many things coming out there and there and there. Yeah. And I wonder um, whether uh, 
uh, not known this kind of thing before, or what happened, you know, with their mm. education. Yeah. So when you go through these uh, scandals, sometimes yeah. some of the things are not very uh, settling, actually, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, and especially those uh, Buddhist uh, teachers who are not really like. Uh, Odin monks, mm -hmm. then you know they know better uh, because uh, they they didn't. Um, yeah, they are just uh, first of all they are human beings, yes. and then human beings do have a lot of negative emotions, yeah. and then due to these negative emotions, they you know people acted out. Mm -hmm. So then those educated people they should know they shouldn't be their uh, what do you call victims. They yeah, should yeah. know be better. Yes. Okay. Uh, but maybe at first, I don't know for some reasons they uh, they uh, I don't know they submitted themselves for mm -hmm. what reason I don't. Then later they just kind of uh, interpreted Regretion, it differently. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So this I think um, from a kind of pure Buddhist point of view, many of these uh, issues are also uh, rooted in uh, selfish uh, self. Uh, satisfaction or self-purpose. Mm -hmm. Those people who uh, whose uh, fulfillments are not met, mm -hmm. then they use it, mm -hmm. and then, but otherwise, you know, um, they should know better. Yeah, yeah. So if it is not, um, there are some real, uh, really a, um, you know, uh, what do you call it, the genuine victims. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are to be sympathized and yes, um, yes. they really need the all the help yeah. and they really need uh, just the has justice has to be there mm -hmm. but all of these are not really like what it seemed mm -hmm. so therefore we have to use our wisdom we have to use like Buddha said mm -hmm. don't take everything for uh, you know due to the respect to me or, or, uh, or I said so you have to use your own uh, intellect and, and wisdom and investigate. So I would say the same thing here. Mm -hmm. Whether it's a Buddhist teacher or any Catholic priest or whoever, okay. when these scandals come out, and still I mean, don't be too uh, soon to judge. Yes. I think we have to we have to investigate. We have to give them also the uh, due respect or whatever mm -hmm. the what the. The law mm -hmm. says it. I think yeah. we go with the law. Yes, yes like this is what Dalai Lama also said. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do it legally, right? Do it legally, mm -hmm. yeah. Legally. yeah. So, okay, well, I'll come back to Buddhism itself. Some say that um, due to the structure or system in Tibetan Buddhism, the Tuku system. Mm -hmm. So, young Tukus are not really, you know, some they if they go to the West and they influenced by the Western value and everything, they being trapped into that kind of dilemma. And then, yeah, this, all this kind of scandal happened because due to the weakness in in the system itself. Yeah. So, do you agree with that point, Kimbala? Mm. So, due to the weakness of the system in the Tibetan yeah, tradition. Yeah, like the Tuku system. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, and then the yes. young Tuku are, you know, yes. yeah, exposed to this kind of yeah, yes. Western world and yes. modern life. Mm -hmm. So, is it due to this system also? Do the, does the system need to improve? Them? Yes. Yeah, the Tuku system. Yeah. Uh, improvement or maybe um, the whole Tuku system has to be demolished. Okay. Oh, that's very, very, I think, that's straightforward. Okay. It's not, it's not serving. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. not serving Buddhism. Yeah. That's what it's supposed to do. Uh-huh. Right? Yeah. Uh, so it gives me harm, small right. benefits, yeah. Um, yeah, because system is such that the Tukus are, are respected so yes. much. Yes, yes, yes. That the, uh, due to belief, not mm. not the investigative b belief. It's a yeah. blind faith. Blind faith, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And then put, you know, a kid, mm. um, is chosen from nowhere. Yes. And put him him on a very high throne. Yes. Wrapped with all these fancy brocades, and that, uh, you know, small boy, uh, actually was uh, not given uh, what he actually deserved to get. Yeah. For a normal kind of upbringing, mm. uh, and uh, then I introduce him to the real life, where he is going to grow up. Uh, instead, he was uh, put in a very, uh, I don't know, mm. idyllic, idyllic uh, kind of a world system. Uh. Uh, yeah, that's it's why not healthy. Also, psychologically it's not speaking, healthy at yeah. all. it's not healthy. Yeah, I I met a, a, a young Tuku. Uh, he say told me he has a trauma. 
due to the punishment that he received during younger days. Yeah. And now, now he look at the text, his hand is still shivering because he's punished by his guru. Yeah. In in a it's a snowy environment, yeah. Mm-hmm. So that kind of thing. Yeah. So you think the two good seasons should be abolished at all? I think so. I no, think no, so. not even improvement. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's the twenty first century. Yeah. Right, and, and uh, you can see now what's happening. Yeah. Yeah, but this two good system is not even in the original Vajrayana setup, right? The, I don't, I don't hear the eighty four Mahasiddhas are two goods. Right. right. They are the the right. others practitioner, right? Yeah. Uh, Turkus, you know, that Turkus are always there, hmm. but it's the kind of uh, recognized Turkus. Recognized yeah. Turkus is started for particularly in in Tibetan Buddhism. I started uh, first time with the Kamapa, um, right? Kajupa, Kajupas. Kajupas. Yeah. From there it went, and then recently it um, it became so popular. Mm-hmm. You, know, you can see why. Yeah, because the tuku is a money-making machine. You can come check forward. Yeah, you know. Thank you for being so straight. Really, <laughs> we need that sometimes. You, you know, <laughs> it's not right. It's not right. Yes, for this kid. Yeah, who, whoever you have chosen to be uh, tuku, mm. uh, it's not fair to him. Yes, I think he is chosen to make money for yes, that yes, kind yes. of uh, you know yeah. uh, institute or a yeah. monastery or things like that. Yes. But if you really want to make him uh, a successful in making money, then you should train him such. Yeah. But that you didn't do. Yes. So yes. that's why, as you, you just mentioned, that uh-huh. these two groups are traumatized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they don't know better. They yeah. don't know. They are not introduced to the real world experience. Yes. You know? Yeah. Instead of the, the fantasy world. Yeah, and yeah. then uh yeah, then once they became now an adult mm-hmm. and then they uh, are exposed to the Western style, of course then easily they will be uh, manipulated by, you know yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, attracted to this kind of thing. And yes. what is Kepala advice for those who have been recognized as a uh, and especially young Tukus nowadays? Yeah. What is Kepala advice for them, Emil? Mm-hmm. How to become a good lama in in, in short? I think yeah, um, some of them are actually doing it because mm. are they even though they don't want to uh, resume their position as a tuku, mm. they can really like resign from such position if mm-hmm. if you feel if you have this kind of realization now. Mm. There are some happen, you know, already, mm. Mm. and you can still serve Buddha Dharma. Uh, with your capacity, mm. uh, and you 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 don't actually go against Buddha the Buddha's teaching. It's nothing to do with the Buddha's teaching, right? What mm. is happening yeah. with you? Uh, and if you realize it, I think you can still do. Uh, mm. This is what my uh, suggestion for those troopers: don't give up, mm-hmm. and because uh, uh, you are responsible of your own life. Mm-hmm. You know so mm-hmm. that means. If you go against uh, Buddha Dharma, mm. then you are actually uh, doing something harmful thing to yourself, mm. right? Mm. But uh, because of everything dictates by by your karma, so you are creating karma that that uh, will resolve uh, in in a very negative way mm-hmm. uh, for your life. Mm-hmm. So that's why, uh, uh, even though if you don't want to. Um, you know, maintain that position, that name of Tuku, whatever, you can yeah, resign from it, mm-hmm. but you be a good uh, human being uh, and, uh, you know, serve the humanity mm-hmm. uh, in a different capacity. Mm. Uh, in your experience, uh, Kempla, d- does anyone really resign from his title of Tuku ship? Does anyone really do that? No, I don't think uh, so. Don't think so huh? Yeah, uh, I don't think so. They still use uh, you have the title and continue to serve the society. Right. Okay. And well, I come back to the question that um, some say uh, this Tuku has scandal or this Rinpoche involved in certain bad things because he's not the real one. Mm-hmm. Uh, with the assumption that if he's the real, then he will not make mistake. Right. Is that truly so? No, I don't think so. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't have the capacity to say who is uh, false and who is the real one. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a room for many tulkus, mm. even for one one uh, line of uh, you know uh, master. Yeah, one master can also manifest into many. Yeah, like so Jamie Kenzie, uh, Kenzie. Kenzie. Yeah. and and that actually shows that how compassionate the bodhisattvas are. Mm. For example, why our Lopati Shura has a thousand arms? Yeah, it's a representation of his compassion. Yeah. So you know, hundred is not enough. 
thousand. Yeah. Yes. Even thousand maybe is not enough. Yeah. Similarly, some real great bodhisattva can say, oh, I have to be there today in Kuala Lumpur. Maybe mm. at the same time, there's a need uh, in, in Penang too. Mm -hmm. So why not then manifest another <laughs> one in Penang? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's similar to that. Uh, the many manifestations of two groups are it's possible. Mm -hmm. But who is real, who is uh, not real, mm. very difficult to say. Yeah. Even those considered real, if you really, really go into it and maybe investigate it by mm. means of logic and reasoning, and, yeah, and yeah. then I think it may crumble, <laughs> basically, <laughs> you know. So therefore, I think it's really based on people's faith. Uh -huh. And then... Uh, responsibility. Uh -huh. So one who has the name, uh -huh. position, and that person also has to take responsibility. Uh -huh. And if he is taking responsibility uh, nicely, so then people can also build faith. And uh -huh. then, so then, in real good good teachers can always tell you, including Dalai Lama. Uh -huh. Dalai Lama never said that I am uh, living, uh, you know, the Avalokiteshvara. He never says that. Yes. Is the people say it, yeah, yeah. but for me, I'm just a ordinary, ordinary monk, yeah. monk yeah. and who is also struggling. Mm -hmm. And then he said, I have, do have some con particular, uh, you know, connection with uh, loving kindness, compassion, and so forth. And then he says, mm -hmm. you know, um, I'm doing my best mm -hmm. in order to serve people. Yeah. But he never said I'm unreal in this and that. Mm -hmm. Similar to the many others too. Uh, for example, Zhongzhi Kinsley which always says that, you know, I do have this big name to mm -hmm. fulfill yeah. and which I will try my best to do it. Mm. But I don't think I'm real German Kinsey you know, or you know, that kind of thing. He he yeah. says that. Yes. He says but that doesn't mean that I'm I'm backing up. I'm doing my best. Yeah. But I cannot really like a uh, um, claim yeah, yeah. that that position yes, yes, yes. for me personally. Sure. Yeah. Uh, due to the time, um, so we have to stop here, and uh, let's go to the next episode, and we will, we are going to discuss about uh, guru disciple relationship in further details. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. See you. Mm -hmm.